And new word this morning from Vice President Joe Biden hammering the GOP for stonewalling the president's jobs plan. The vice president asks the American public to step up pressure on congressional Republicans. The Republican Congress won't join us. We're going to continue to act on our own to make the changes that we can to bring relief to middle class families and those aspiring to get into the middle class. Look, it's simple. We refuse to take no for an answer. That's why the president and I need your help to tell your Republican congressmen and senators to step up. Tell them to stop worrying about their jobs and start worrying about yours. Meanwhile, Massachusetts you know, American... Senator Scott Brown responded saying Democrats are to blame for stalling on a jobs initiative. Another bipartisan opportunity is staring us right in the face. It's a jobs bill I introduced back in January. And far from being just my idea, it's the only jobs bill on the table that has the support of majorities in the House and the Senate, and also has been endorsed by the President. So the decision pretty much rests with Majority Leader Harry Reid. Are we going to do something for the American people, or are we going to let politics win out again? And meantime, next Tuesday, the president heads to the battleground state of Pennsylvania, but the White House says it is not a campaign trip. This morning, we have the first independent assessment of Texas Governor Rick Perry's flat tax proposal. Governor Perry says his plan would reduce taxes and create jobs. But a look at some of the details found it is more complicated than that. A perfect subject to start today's edition of Fact or Fiction. And joining me from Boston is Christina Bellantoni of Roll Call. Good morning to you, Christina. Good morning, Alice. So let's start right off with that flat tax assessment. It is brand new from the Tax Policy Center. Here's the question. Fact or fiction, about 40% of U.S. households would see taxes increase and 40% would see a decrease under the flat tax proposed by Texas Governor Rick Perry. What's the answer? Yeah, that's fact according to this study here. And I think that that's important to note. Any sort of flat tax proposal is going to decrease taxes on some people, but it will increase taxes on others based on our current tax system. And that's one reason why, you know, should Rick Perry be the nominee, this will get a heavy, heavy dose of uh, criticism and attacks from the Democrats because they're a big focus of the Democratic platform is to say, you know, we need to help the poor, we need to help mm -hmm. the lower middle class, we need to help the middle class. And certainly when you've got the Democratic Party and President Barack Obama saying, the wealthiest should pay more taxes. This is the exact opposite of their plan. So, you know, Perry's right when he says he would, you know, flatten the tax system and that it would simplify sort of the way you could file taxes. But uh, whether or not this would help a majority of the people, that's a much, much bigger question. And of course, you can manipulate those numbers any way you want in an attack ad. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's get to fact or fiction here. When Mitt Romney was governor of Massachusetts, the state ranked 47th in the nation for job growth. Is that fact or fiction? Yeah, that's fact. Um, and Governor Romney often talks about, you know, sort of his record of job creation. And he certainly did a lot of, you know, good things here in Massachusetts. Um, and Governor Perry talks about his record. And and when you, com it's all about sort of comparison, sort of what times these were. You know, the Governor Romney was governor of Massachusetts many years ago. Governor Perry is currently governor. And yes, his state is performing a little bit better than the nation right now because we're in such a bad economic situation. A lot of those jobs, you know, are minimum wage jobs. Um, a lot of those jobs are due to population growth, not necessarily necessarily something that he's done that's so brilliant, but I think each of these governors is really going to have to talk a lot about their record, or each of these you know, governor and former governor, as they campaign here, talk about their record of creating jobs, particularly because they're running against President Barack Obama, who you know is having a much tougher time with the unemployment numbers, and that's really what a lot of voters are going to be deciding on next November. Yeah, okay, well here's an interesting uh, fact or fiction then regarding the president. His policies stopped job losses. Is that fact or fiction? Yeah, you know, I, I have a little bit of trouble with the word fact. Um, that is true. <laughs> and I think that you can, you can look at the numbers. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it is a fact. And you can look at sort of the actual numbers and say, well, yes, this, this trend was this, and it is now this. But the unemployment situation is bad. And I think that it's much harder for the president to make an argument that it could have been much worse if I had an X. And, you know, he famously got briefed right after he won the presidency, which was three years ago last night. And... Uh, uh, he, he got this briefing a few days later that basically said we're headed for some serious economic trouble. He came in and he did inherit this big crisis. Voters are sort of tired of hearing him say that yeah. and they want to see more results. They're in a very, very difficult position. I think the number you're going to hear a lot in attack ads over the next uh, probably year is about the month that there were zero jobs created uh, a couple months ago. I think that that's a big number that the Republicans certainly in Congress are really hitting the president on. Is it going to get a little bit better? You know, the jobs report we just got was a little bit better than expected. So 
Yeah. That's what the White House is really counting on. Okay, I I'm out of time, but I still want to ask this and give me just a one word answer here. Fiction or fact here? Both Romney and Perry's promise that on day one is that president, they will sign an executive order to wipe out President Obama's health care law, that that is feasible there. Fact or fiction? Uh, that's fiction, and basically it's just a lot more complicated than that. Michelle Bachman is actually true in this, that you need to have congressional action, and it's, it's not just so easy as signing an executive order. Okay, that makes sense. Christina Bellantoni, always <laughs> making sense for us. Appreciate it. Thanks, Alex. Have a great weekend. You too.